It's World Oceans Day. That's the second biggest beach-related holiday after spring break. Anthony here for D News. June 8th is the fifth annual World Oceans Day. The theme for the next two years is together we have the power to protect the ocean. You know, the ocean covers 70% of the earth. It generates about half our oxygen. It regulates our climate by taking in most of the sun's heat and absorbing carbon dioxide. It's where sushi comes from. It's a big deal. But I think we all know that there's been some nasty stuff affecting the oceans. Pollution from industrial discharge is causing the erosion of our shorelines. Pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers, oil, sewage. We dump a lot of that stuff into the ocean where it's consumed by marine life and actually becomes part of the food chain. And it's kind of slowly poisoning undersea life. Overfishing has led to depletions in certain species. The census of marine life estimates that 90% of the big fish like bluefin tuna and halibut have disappeared from the world's oceans. And it's not just about fishing a single species to extinction, it's about changing the ecosystem of the oceans. Overfishing a naturally dominant species can cause other ones to flourish, ones that could potentially change the ecosystem in a damaging way. It also causes genetic changes to the species of fish. See, most mates are gone, so previously dominant traits can disappear and change the fish forever. The ocean has absorbed about 80% of the heat caused by climate change and 33% of the extra carbon dioxide that has been created by humans. And that's leading to oxygen dead zones, areas where oxygen in the water has been greatly depleted, just causing areas where there isn't marine life anymore. And all that extra carbon carbon dioxide is also changing the pH balance of the ocean. It's making it more acidic, which destroys a lot of ecosystems. Discovery News reporter Christina Reed talked to marine biologist Dean Miller about what that means for the Great Barrier Reef. And what that means is that the corals aren't able to form as strong a structures as they'd like to. So in terms of uh, what can we do, I'm sure Australia is uh, doing everything they can to reduce their carbon emissions, and, and I know the world is uh, really, really stepping up the effort. A 2011 report from the International Program on the State of the Ocean concluded that we're at a high risk for entering a phase of extinction in marine species that is unprecedented in human history. The last time the ocean absorbed this much carbon was 55 million years ago, which also caused this massive extinction event that destroyed 50% of all deep sea mammals at the time. So what can we do? Well, we're already working to reduce carbon dioxide in our environment, but we can push for more regulation of emissions, use public transportation, you know all that stuff. We can also work to get more areas of the ocean designated as marine reserves. And there are sites and apps out there that'll help you know what fish are environmentally safe to eat at any given time in your area. You can read more on the World Oceans Day site, and if you wanna watch more of the interview Christina did with the Great Barrier Reef Divers, while most of them were under underwater actually, which is awesome. We'll put a link down below and subscribe for more D news.